So the book that I have just finished, just come out of the press, is this book. It's been sitting in the press for some time, several hours, and I finally came back to it, pulled it out. This is the fourth of four videos demonstrating how to make a flat spine sketchbook or journal or artist book. This video will cover how to make the case and how to do what we call casing in. Looking there at the head, got the headbands on the head and the tail. I'm opening the book for the first time here. Once it has come out of the press, it has a good ability to open up in my flap because of the flyleaf end sheets. There's no trap on that hinge. I have yet to separate the pages where the signatures weren't torn all the way through. And that will be my last step for putting it on a bookshelf in preparation for eventual use as a sketchbook. This has a pretty good book square, amount of overlap there on the forehead and on the head and tail. Let's get started. I really should have removed the waste sheet labeled W before treating the spine and sewing the headbands. But it's not too late to take a bone folder and tear them off of each end before proceeding. Apply a daub of PVA glue underneath the sewing tapes and glue them down to the paste sheet. Fold the tarlatan hinge down and embed it in a layer of glue onto the paste sheet. Fray the loose ends of the headband core with a teasing needle and paste the frayed ends down, flared out, onto the paste sheet slash tarleton hinge. Once the glue has dried, repeat the process of gluing down the tapes, tarleton hinge, and frayed headband core onto the paste sheet of the other side of the book. Once the glue dries on side two, use the text block to measure the height of the book covers on a sheet of bookboard. The height of the covers and spine piece should be just a bit longer than the distance from one headband to the other. My book measures nine and 13 sixteenths inches long. I'm transferring that measurement to the other side of the bookboard and cutting that length off. This strip will yield both cover pieces and the spine all at a consistent height. Note, the grain direction on the board must correspond or run parallel to the grain direction of the text block. Reposition the text block with about 3 16 inch of the spine hanging over the edge of the board. Mark a line about 1 16 inch away from the fore edge at the head corner and another at the tail corner. Choose the greater of these two marks and cut a line parallel to the zero edge of the board. Use that board as a guide to cut another board identical in dimensions. These are the cover boards. Open them up and mark lines across the seam to indicate the spine edge. Label head, tail, A, B, and inside. Measure the width of the spine at the widest points, which are the tapes. A ruler will do fine, measuring 7 8 inches, but I really like these digital calipers I found at the hardware store. Mark the measurement on the strip left over from cutting the cover boards and cut the spine out. I've made a spacing jig out of three one-inch scraps of bookboard and wrapped with book cloth. I use this jig to space the hinge for the appropriate width 
and to keep the boards and spine parallel. Before committing more time and also valuable book cloth to the project, I like to tape the boards together, properly spaced, and dry fit the book just to test the fit. Flip the book over so that the tape mimics the cover material before dry fitting. I once made the mistake of fitting the book with the masking tape holding the inside together and was sorely surprised when the book didn't fit after I put cloth on the outside. Inspect the book square on the fore edge, head, and tail. It shouldn't be more than one eighth of an inch on the fore edge. Gently remove the tape, pulling horizontally rather than vertically, and sand all four edges of each face of the boards and spine to remove any cutting spurs and or any rough spots left from the masking tape. Cut a piece of book cloth that measures over three inches larger all around than the layout of the boards and spine piece. Remember to align the grain direction of the book cloth with the boards and the text block. Lay out the boards and spine, spacing the hinge with the spacer and ensuring there's at least one and a half inches all around the edges of the layout. Mark a corner of one board before flipping that board over and applying glue to its backside. Spread the glue evenly and quickly with a brush, then flip the board back over and align it with a corner marking before pressing it down. Pressure is best applied through the thinner material, in this case the book cloth. Be aware of any glue on your fingers before you touch the book cloth. Set up a ruler at the tail of the adhered board and apply glue to the back side of the spine. Flip it over, space it from the cover board using the spacer jig, and make sure the tail of the spine butts up to the edge of the ruler. Apply glue to the final board, flip the board over, space it from the spine using the spacer jig, and line up the tail of the board to the edge of the ruler before pressing down. Trim the flaps or ruler's width away from the edges of the boards. I've made a jig for cutting corners at a 45 degree angle and one board thickness away from the corner of the board, allowing for the cloth to fully cover the board without causing a bulky mess. I've made another jig four board thicknesses wide that helps me to make the so-called tuxedo cut. This jig marks a starting line for the point of the two wedges cut out along an imaginary axis running through the center of each hinge. If you make this cut too close to the boards, you'll expose book board and the paper of the book cloth at the head and the tail. Apply glue to the four edge flaps first. Fold them over, pulling the flaps over the edge of the board, ensuring a sharp crease and pressing down firmly. Mm -hmm. 
Run a bone folder or a fingernail if you like along the tab at each corner to close the tab. Run glue on the head and tail flaps next, one right after the other. Fold the spine flap over first, then each flap on the covers working from the center out. Use the bone folder to work the book cloth onto the inside edges of the covers and spine at the hinge point. Burnish down the corner cuts and all seams. You've got to be careful not to use too much glue, otherwise it will all squeeze out as you press the flaps down. On the other hand, if you use too little glue, the flaps won't press down and they won't adhere. Dry fit the text block to the double check that the book doesn't stick out beyond the edges of the cover and that you have a desired book square. Make sure as you fit the text block that it is snug in the case. Gently set the book down without dislodging the alignment and open one cover board, exposing the paste down sheet. Brush off any dust or goobers before slipping a scrap piece of paper under the paste down and applying glue to the surface of the page. Work quickly before the glue has a chance to dry but be careful to keep the scrap from moving and accidentally depositing glue onto the underside of the paste sheet. Slip the scrap straight out. When closing the cover, make contact with the spine first and then close the cover board onto the paste sheet. Press down firmly. Flip the book over and open it to the back side of the paste sheet. Press the bond between the sheet and the board from this side, first with your fingers, then with the bone folder. Close the book and turn it over yet again. Burnish the hinge with the edge of the bone folder. Turn the book back over, open it up to the other paste sheet, and repeat the process of applying glue, closing the book, flipping it over, opening it up, pressing the bond, closing the book, and burnishing the hinge.
Resist the urge to mess with the book before putting it under pressure while the glue cures. Protect the cover by placing clean press boards larger than the book over the covers. Note, the spine should not be under pressure. I like to leave the book under pressure for at least two hours, if not overnight. Thank you.